So today we will have a look at a few interesting ways we can use the Befaco Rampage. All of the ideas we will look at today will work also in hardware and all of them and many more are also available in the document of patching ideas and techniques that I continue updating. There is now a whole new section about um, hardware modules that are available in VCV starting with Rampage. So if you're interested, links in the description. So we all know that Rampage can generate envelopes right functions attack decay also attack sustain decay if we want and also looping envelopes that we can use as sorts of uh, lfos even right but i want to show you a few more interesting things uh, we can do with it so let's have a look the first technique I want to show you is how we can use Rampage as a burst generator, basically generating a burst, a series of triggers we can then use for many things. Here I have Kickall also from Befaco, just as the, as the voice in this case, right? And the idea he is uh, as follows. We will use function B to trigger or to start or to activate the looping, the cycling of uh, function A as long as a uh, function B will rise. I will show you everything in a second, right? And the triggers, the um, um, variation in the triggers will come from function A. So what's going on here? I have function B. I'm going to use the rising output here and show you this on the scope and show you also the envelope. So as long as envelope B or function B is rising, as long as it's in its uh, uh, so-called attack stage, it will output a gate from the rising output. Let me show you this. Maybe a bit quicker, a bit longer. Sorry, you can see it's rising. If I have rise and fall, you see as long as it's rising, as long as it's going up, right? There is a gate, the gate is the blue trace, right? So we are going to use this gate we are going to use it to activate the looping, the cycle of function A. So again, as long as function B is rising, function A will loop. When it's done rising, function L will stop looping already. You get the idea here. So I'm going to use the end of cycle output, which will output a trigger whenever um, function A reaches its end. All right, I'm going to uh, use this to trigger kick all. And now we have to trigger both envelopes at the same time, right? If you are doing this in hardware, you can use a stack, a stack cable or a mult or whatever. In VCV, it's not such a big problem. And in this case, I'm using the manual gate. You can use a sequencer, you can use a MIDI keyboard, right? So now I will trigger it. And we get a burst of triggers now the length of this burst will come from the rise right as long as the function is rising there will be a burst so a longer rise a longer burst of triggers and the intervals between the triggers will come from the function a right Right, and you can really create all sorts of different effects like this. I have here a few examples. Right, so here I have exactly uh, the same. I'm just, the only difference is that I'm using sample and hold to change the rise time or to modulate more or less randomly the rise time of function A, which means that the intervals between the triggers will randomly change. So we get a burst of triggers, but the intervals are not constant. They will change sort of a random burst of triggers. This is triggering again kick hole through some delay. And I'm also using the sample and hold for pitch. So I'm going to trigger again both envelopes at the same time and we will get this sort of random burst of triggers. Right, again, function B will control how long the burst will be. Function A will control the intervals between the triggers, which means that because I'm now randomly modulating function A, the um, intervals will be also random. I have here another example and uh, for how you can create right a burst of triggers. In this case, I'm, using, I'm going to use an external gate to activate the function. 
right? Uh, um, the cycle function of um, function A of envelope A, and I'm going to use envelope B to modulate through some attenuation to modulate the rise time. So again, we will get a modulation of the um, intervals between the triggers. And in this case, because I have rise and fall, also the intervals will rise and fall in frequency, in rate. And this will happen as long as I hold this gate, because again, I'm using it to activate the cycle function. Right, so if I do this a bit slower. Right, you get this variation. And again, you can use a sequencer, you can use your MIDI keyboard, you can play notes, and each note will trigger or will gate this cycle function. I can also... Right, make something like this, or a sort of a bouncing ball effect. Right, so again, with uh, gating the cycle function, you can really get interesting results. I have here one last example. Right, in this case, we are using a different output for um, receiving our triggers, our burst of triggers. In this case, I'm using the comparator output. Now, don't be afraid of this word comparator. It's not so complicated as it sounds. Basically, it will compare the signal from function B with the signal from function A. Whenever B is greater, we will get a gate out of this output. Right, so it's not so complicated as it sounds. And now what I'm doing again, I'm using an external gate to gate, right, the cycle of function A. But because I'm using the comparator output, the relationship between B and A will, um, will basically generate our burst of um, triggers. Right? If I change this uh, relationship, We get all sorts of different results. Again, depending on how you have them, how you have the envelope set. continue with this comparator output and show you how we can get random gates with random lengths that again we can use for all sorts of different things. So as I mentioned before, whenever function B, the signal of function B is greater than function A, we will get a gate from the comparator output, right? So if now, for example, I trigger both, here we will get the envelopes or the functions, here we will see the gate. Right, you can see as long as it's greater, this is the yellow trace, we get a gate, and as long as it's greater, the gate will also stay open. If I change this now, right, the gate will be very short, right? If I have envelope A a bit longer, again, we'll have a very short gate. So like this, with the ed uh, changing the relationship between the two functions, we can get different results from the comparator output, which means, here I have an example, which means that if we randomly, using a sample and hold, for example, modulate the envelopes or the functions, right, from the comparator output, we will basically get, get random gates with random lengths, right, the gates will stay open um, uh, in random times or at random times. 
Right, so I have here a sample and hold. I modulate, I'm triggering the sample and hold with the end of cycle of the functions, right? So the function will end its cycle and will trigger the sample and hold, end its cycle, trigger it again. So all we have to do is bring them to cycle, to loop, right? I have both switches on and I just have to trigger them once. And have a look here on the scope, as you can see, we get random gates with random lengths because again, according to the relationship form or of the two envelopes of the two functions, the comparator output will output, that was not such a nice drawing, will output a different result, right? So now we can use this, for example, to um, control an envelope, right? An ADSR that I have here. This is opening a VCA for the even VCO. It will sound like this. Right, so again, we get random gates. The gates will happen randomly according to the functions and they will stay also open at random times. Again, according to the relationship between the functions. Right, now this doesn't have to be random. For example, I have here function B modulating the rise of function A right and because function b uh, as soon as we bring it to cycle it will repeat itself right this means that we will get a steady rhythm but still we will get a, an interesting rhythm with different um, gate lengths so again i will bring this to cycle and you can see this on the scope now again because function b is basically looping it's repeating itself we will get uh, something a bit more stable but still very interesting Right? And by changing envelope B, for example. Right? Changing the relationship between them. We get a different result. And then we can use, for example, the end of cycle as the main clock to drive other sequencers, to drive other voices and all sorts of different interesting things. interesting thing we can do with Rampage is using it as a slope detector, basically detecting the movement of an incoming voltage. When the voltage goes up, when the signal goes up, it, we will get a gate out of the rising output. When it goes down, we will get a gate out of the falling output. Like this, we can do all sorts of different things. Here I have just offset signal, as you can see on here on the left, right? I can move it and go up and down in voltage. If I use the rising output, let's say it will be a blue cable, with the rise and fall I can change the response, right? So now I'm getting many gates. If I change the response a bit, you will see that when I go up, we basically get, right, a gate. Now there is no movement, we get no gate. If I use, for example, a yellow cable for the fall output, now I will move down with the offset and you will get a yellow gate here on the scope. Yellow, I move up blue, I move down, yellow, right, and so on. We can use this for many things. For example, I have here um, another kick all, again, a kick all from the FACO going through some delay, and I have random pitch information coming from, from a sample and hold, right? This is going to the input of Rampage. Again, we are not, in this case, not using the trigger input. We are using the signal input for the slope detection. Right, and now again, when the signal goes up in voltage, we will get a gate out of the rising, so we can use this to trigger our voice. Or 
or when the signal goes down. Another interesting thing you can try, and for this we need a logic module, I will show you this in a second, is again, I have here a random pitch coming from sample and hold, which means that sometimes the same note will be played twice or even three times uh, in succession, right, one after the other. For example, if you don't want this to happen, if you want to have a trigger only when there is a change in note, you can use Rampage as a slope detector, basically combining the rising and falling output when the voltage goes up you will get a gate when the voltage goes down you will get a gate but you will not get a gate or a trigger whenever it's static whenever it plays the same note so for this i'm going to use logic i have here a boolean logic module from bog audio right and we can use either or, or x or basically means that whenever one or the other is high whenever the rising outputs a gate or the falling outputs a gate, we will get a gate out of the OR output. So now we will get this voice playing only when there is a change in notes. Right, when there is no change, the voice will not play, we will get a rest. Another interesting uh, thing you can try is basically splitting a sequence between different voices. So I have, uh, again here, the sample and hold generating pitch information. And in this case, I'm using one output to trigger one voice, which is the kick all, right? So when the voltage goes up, the kick all will be triggered. When the voltage goes down, I have here another voice with the even VCO and both of them are going through some delay, right? So I'm basically splitting the sequence in two. When it goes up, one voice will be triggered. When it goes down, the second voice will be triggered. Another thing we can do is use Rampage as an envelope follower, basically following the amplitude envelope, the volume envelope of an incoming signal and outputting a modulation source that is respective to those levels. Right here I have some drums. You can see the actual signal, the actual audio here on the scope. Right now for this again we will use the signal input, not the trigger input, but the signal input. So I'm going to send those drums to the signal input. And now here in green, you will see the envelope and we can change again the response with the rise and fall. So I want quick response. I want it to uh, um, respond quickly when it's attacking, but when it's falling, when it's released, I want it to be a bit slower. And you can see how it's changing on the scope. And now basically we have a modulation source that will follow the amplitude. It will follow the volume of those drums. Of course, you can use any other signal you want. But here I have an example with exactly the same thing with the drums, right? So here I have the drums. Again, going through Rampage, through the input of Rampage. And this is modulating the amplitude of noise, basically, with noise plethora, also from the FACO. Right, so the drums will control the amplitude of the noise through a VCA. So if I open it, right, if I mute the drums, It sounds a bit like the drums are playing the noise, right? And it's really nice like this to add another layer. So if I unmute them.
The last thing I want to show you is how we can use Rampage as a trigger delay, basically taking a trigger and delaying it in a certain amount of time, creating all sorts of different um, effects and rhythms. Right, so here I have a kick drum coming from kick all, and I have one envelope of Rampage basically opening a VCA for the noise plethora. Right, so I can trigger it. Right, now I'm going to use exactly the same trigger that I use for the kick to trigger the first envelope, the first function, and I'm going to use the end of cycle of this function. Again, whenever it's ending, it will output a trigger that will trigger our envelope. Right, for now, of course, they are happening exactly at the same time. I want to delay this hi-hat, sort of noisy hi-hat, um, so I can create an offbeat with the kick, right? So all I have to do now is change, for example, the fall time, right? And now the envelope will be longer, which means that the end of cycle will happen also delayed. Right? Again, I'm using the end of cycle, which means that only when this function ends its cycle, it will output a trigger. And since we have some amount or some time of uh, uh, release or fall, right, this trigger will be delayed. Another example I have here is how we can use this to create swing. Right, so again, I have here a kick drum, again, the same kick drum, but I'm using a multiplied clock to trigger both rampages, uh, both rampages, both sides of rampage, output A and output B, or function A and function B. And again, I'm going to use Boolean logic to combine both end of cycle. Again, when one end of cycle is high or when the other is high, we will get basically a gate that will trigger, again, the Hyatt in this case through per call. Right, for now it's nothing interesting, but when I start delaying, when I start raising the fall, for example, of one of the envelopes, it will delay one of the triggers, and we get to a point where it sounds a bit like, or it's not sounds like, it is a swing. Right, and I can have fine control over this. Right, so like this, we can also create a swing. And that was it, basically. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, have a look in the description to the link to the document. It's available on my Patreon page with many, many ideas and patching techniques. Thank you for watching and cheers.